Presented by Phoenix Rising. Bleach. Things you need to know that most people don't. Phoenix Rising here and today we're going to be talking about household bleach. I'm kind of doing this video as a PSA because with the global pandemic going on right now and this is being filmed in May of 2020, a very hard commodity to come by finding a gallon of regular household bleach at least in my neck of the woods and I'm sure many other locations. Which means that a lot of people are buying a lot of bleach probably more than they normally would because they want to make sure they can disinfect if need be. Now, uh, because of that, uh, I came across some information or found out some stuff that I'd never really known about bleach. And when I did, I was pretty shocked and surprised. And then when I talked to other people, nobody else that I knew, uh, even people, a lot of people my age, and I've been around for half a century or so, right, uh, weren't aware of. So I want to get this information out here because it is important. It might be the difference between you successfully sanitizing uh, an area or things using bleach, or it might make a difference in you trying to purify water and ended up getting sick because it didn't work the way you thought it was, okay? So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll talk briefly about what we're going to do in this video, the separate sections of it. I'll post an index then we'll get to it. First off, I have some easy pour bleach. We're going to go over this because this stuff is different. This is not regular household bleach and this is not suitable for disinfecting, okay? It's not. It says so right on the back of the bottle in the smaller print. So if you bought Easy Pour or, or Splashless Bleach, that's okay for cleaning, okay for laundry, not okay for anything else. Uh, we're going to talk about age on bleach. If your bleach is more than a year old, uh, it's not going to perform maybe even at all. Okay, I've got 10 month old bleach, one month old bleach. We're going to put these to the test in a couple of different methodologies and, uh, and show you the difference that 10 months makes on a, on a, on a bleach concentrate, okay? Uh, we're going to talk about different concentrations of bleach. We're going to talk about the date codes. Uh, the code that you see stamped on the bottle, really these things should have a best buy or a use by date, but they don't. But somewhere in the labeling or on the fine print is, should be a date code. We're going to go over a little bit how to decipher that so you know how old your bleach is because it's relevant, okay? Then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how to make water safe to drink within reason, or at least kill the nasties out of it, uh, using bleach. But I'm going to give you some extra information, and we're going to talk about this a little more in depth than two drops in 30 minutes, because that might get you sick depending on the age of your bleach and everything else. Okay, and I'm not, I, I can't quantify what to do, but I'm going to give you some food for thought and uh, what I would do if I had some bleach it maybe wasn't spring fresh and I was trying to use it how I would go about it. So we're going to go over all that stuff so please like and subscribe and uh, enjoy the video. I hope you get something out of it because like I said there was a lot of information uh, that I wasn't aware of that I am now and I would like to share that with you. So uh, like and subscribe and let's get to it. Let's talk about Easy Pour and Splash Proof Bleach. Okay, so the first bleach I wanted to talk about is bleach that isn't good for disinfecting, okay? Uh, what we have here is this is labeled as Easy Pour. This happens to be Food Lion brand, but this is Easy Pour Bleach. You may see Splash Proof Bleach or some other thing added on that it says other than just bleach, right? Uh, so what is this stuff and what is it good for? Okay, first off, when I looked at this bottle, I could find nowhere on it a listing for how much sodium hypochlorite is, which is the active ingredient in bleach is in this bottle. As I did research and looked online, I found a few references that said that generally speaking, one to five percent sodium hypochlorite is what is in this product. Six percent is what's in your standard bleach, okay? This ultra concentrated 33% more, whatever, something, something, 7.5%. Okay, so this stuff is weaker. 
It also has additives to make it a little bit thicker so it doesn't splash as readily. That's where the easy pour or splash proof comes from. So first off, you don't know generally what percentage of bleach is in this. It has some extra crap in it, so you wouldn't want to use it for drinking water to purify it or kill the germs in any uh, drinking water or bacteria and stuff. Uh, and it's it, it generally it's not for disinfecting. It even even on the back it shows you a sink and a toilet bowl. And here's a GV brand. I don't know if it shows it. Same thing, sink, toilet bowl. Uh, this one's a smaller bottle. Doesn't show you the sink and the toilet bowl, but tells you that. Uh, this says it's good for cleaning, but right in the back here it says, hey, this don't this is not for disinfecting. If you want to disinfect, you get this. Okay. So if you did happen to buy this because this was all you could find or you have some in your house, just keep in mind that it is, it's not guaranteed to kill COVID or disinfect anything and you certainly wouldn't want to put it into any water that you intended to drink to try and kill the nasties in that, okay? So that's it. I just wanted to cover the bleach. It's not really quite bleach because it's a lot of this is still on the shelves. So use it for your laundry or for general purpose cleaning. Just understand its limitations. So, non-bleach bleach, easy pour. Now we'll go over how age affects bleach and date codes. Okay, now for the star of our show, regular household bleach. Uh, I've got two bottles here, and here's what we're going to do with these, okay? One's Clorox, one's GV brand. To be honest, Clorox isn't necessarily any better, I don't believe, than GV or something else. Uh, they both have an active ingredient, sodium hypochlorite. Now there are some color safe bleaches out there and I didn't buy any of this, I didn't, I'm not mentioning it, but if, hey, if you, it says color safe, read it and it probably has hydrogen peroxide in it, okay? In which case it's not bleach, it's, it's hydrogen peroxide, totally different product, not what we're talking about here, okay? So let's talk about these. Now these two jugs are a little bit different. Uh, first off, I wanted to get some more just regular household bleach for doing this video, but I couldn't find it on the shelves anywhere. I'll be honest, it's May of 2020. All I could find was a more expensive, more concentrated bleach here. So this is 7.5% bleach, this is 6%. The other big difference is I purchased this bleach in July of 2019. This is a I don't use a ton of bleach, so this is just what I happen to have in my laundry room, okay? I purchased this little jug of bleach in May of 2020, or in other words, a few days ago. Now, that being said, bleach has a limited shelf life, okay? This is a really big point. Uh, this is 10 months old now, roughly, roughly 10 months, okay? Uh, this is one month old. And we're going to do some tests. We're going to do two different rounds of tests. One that includes this, and I'll post it at the end because it's not quite as pointed as the second test I did. But what I did was this. I took uh, 25 milliliters, yeah, 25 milliliters of this bleach. Then I took 20 milliliters of this bleach with 5 milliliters of distilled water to dilute this 7.5% down to the 6%. So I had equal potency uh, based on volume, right, of these two products. And then I took food coloring and simply dropped it into these two small dishes. And you'll see all this, okay? Uh, and what you'll see is the difference in how rapidly this works compared to this. And we'll get to the point to where this isn't able to totally dissolve any more of it, and this is, okay? So, a uh, real acid test to really show you that if your bleach is a year old or so, uh, it's probably, if it is effective at all, it's going to be minimally effective. And, uh, and you're going to need to leave it on, if you're going to spray something down with it, leave it there for longer and understand that if it's really grungy or nasty, because as this stuff works and kills biological contaminants, right, as it does that, it's used up in the process. So this doesn't have the need, nearly the power that this does because it's 10 months old, just 10 months. So if you just went out in the last couple of months and bought like five gallons of bleach because you're going to be ready for the COVID, first off, that's kind of hoarding and kind of a, kind of a crappy thing to do. Secondly, is after this stuff blows over, <clears throat> If you don't give this stuff away pretty rapidly, <coughs> you're going to have a closet full of nothing, okay? 
a little over a year. And I did actually have an old jug of bleach. It was like a, close to two years old. Opened it up, couldn't hardly, I had to, pouring this stuff out, it was gone. And this was stored properly, right? This was stored in a cool, dark place, no UV, no sunlight shining on your bottle. But a year and a half, two years old, and you could pour it down the drain and barely smell the bleach. It was literally, it was nothing, okay? So uh, keep that all in mind. So let's uh, do one more thing and talk on this talking about just our regular bleaches before we get into our testing. And that is the date codes, okay? And I'm gonna insert some pictures as, as I'm explaining this. But bleach should have a use-by date on it to tell you when it's no longer going to be considered effective but it doesn't, okay, and I don't know why. Uh, if it had a use-by date on it, I would have noticed such things, and I think most people would, but they don't tell you that. Uh, but the truth is, okay, this July 2019, if I look at the, the code stamped on the bottom bottle, the first two digits say 19, okay, that's a year of production. Then after that, there's a three-digit number that says 192, and then there's a whole series of crap after that, right? But that 192 is the day of the year, with one being January 1st, 365 being December 31st. That's how you're going to get your date code. It's kind of like a Julian date setup, right? So if you have a gallon of bleach, you're not sure how long you've had it for, look on it. And if it's over a year old, it's going to be very ineffective, if effective at all. This is 10 months, and it's substantially weakened, okay? So that's one date code. Uh, this was purchased in January 2020, our non-bleach bleach, right? I go to the bottom, I look at the date code, it says 20003, so this was made January 3rd, 2020, uh, five months old. And lastly, this one's a little bit odd, and uh, this is the reason I wanted to insert these pictures and talk about this. The number on this really doesn't make any sense. It's uh, E620133, uh, then M02, then a 5, then 22. Well, I'm not sure why there's a, what the E6 is. But in looking at this, I bought this May of 2020, and so what I will say is, okay, the E6, I'm going to take that off, and if I say 20, and then 20133, 2020, the 133 day, 133rd day, guess what? That puts it at the beginning of this month or late April. So that would be your date portion of the code. So. Uh, Look at those codes, and you can. it may not be real clear-cut what the manufacture date is, but somewhere in there from all the examples that I've seen, you're, there is going to be a date code in that stamp. You just have to figure it out if you're not sure when you bought it. Or do like I do, write down when you bought it on the darn bottle so you know if the shit's getting old. Oh, pardon my French. The stuff's getting old. So there you have it, date stuff. So let's go ahead. We'll get into our testing. And then we'll do our uh, water purification uh, deal to show you how to do that and some thoughts on that. Next up is our food color testing. In this segment, we'll be adding food coloring to our 6% bleach solutions. We'll start with two drops of red, then keep adding more food coloring until we get to 10 drops at which point the 10-month-old bleach could no longer completely break down the food coloring. Okay, so uh, here we are. We're going to use this first, and this really this is all you need to see. Uh, if you want, there's going to be some testing that I did more in depth with different dyes and materials and fabric and different papers and all that. Using, uh, using all three different bleaches, but basically, here's the takeaway. I've got 10 month old bleach, 6% solution right here, just as it came out of the bottle. And I've got one month old bleach that I diluted from the 7.5% because it was ultra concentrated down to the 6% so that they're apples to apples comparison between standard household bleach that's 10 months old and one that's less than a month old, okay? Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop food coloring in these and see just how fast this bleach dissolves it. Now, there's 25 milliliters by volume in each of these. Like I said, I put this 25 milliliters of the 10-month-old and 20 milliliters of the uh, one-month-old 
higher concentration with five milliliters of distilled water added to bring it to the six percent level that was what this was when it was brand new so let's go ahead and we'll put some uh, water or water we'll put some red dye in here and see how long this takes to do I'm gonna put a couple drops in and we'll just see one two one two okay so there you go we've got uh, both of these let me go ahead and agitate slightly just to see how long before these uh, dissipate as you can see uh, our one month old bleach is pulling ahead at a significant pace let's go ahead and swirl this a little bit more and now I'm looking uh, move these up down just a little bit and I, I can see a noticeable difference between the two uh, from my angle looking at it and it's pretty much gone out of the uh, one month not quite gone out of the I may have sloshed a little bit there got one little wisp in the center of that one month old bleach but uh, Basically, the one-month-old's gone. We're still, we still have a tint on our ten-month-old. Uh, we'll just give it. Uh, we'll let it keep rolling here, and we'll put up. I'll, I'll, I may even insert some time stamps for uh, where it's at from the time we drop the uh, drop the stuff in here, just uh, just for reference. So, and I'm at the three-minute mark. And I'm still seeing some, you know, I get the pale yellowish color to the one month old. I'm not seeing anything. And when I go to this, uh, go to the 10 month old stuff, and gosh, it's still, whoops, oh, there, that wasn't very good, wasn't very gracious. I'm still actually not quite back to the original tint on the 10 month old solution. So we're, we'll just wait it out here. And then once we do this, we'll go ahead, we'll add uh, maybe some blue dye or something. And give it one more shot and let it uh, see how it works here. I think I'm finally just about. Uh, I think I'm just about back to neutral on the ten-month-old stuff. I would say so. And uh, I'm going to call that neutral. All of the shading is just a hair off. So basically, uh, yeah, close to four-minute time for the. For the 10 month old stuff so let's stop this or actually yeah we'll stop this we'll come back we'll put some blue dye in okay so we've given the bleach time to work on the red dye let's go ahead and put blue dye in and we'll just put one drop in of blue dry dye in each and i don't know if maybe i should just leave it uh naturally dissipate and uh we'll see how that works out instead of agitating it quite so much just see how it diffuses and uh, dissolves well, I'm definitely seeing a, a significant uh, significantly faster action in the one month old dye and again the camera's looking down and I'm looking at a, at a different angle so it's uh, yeah definitely uh, wow this is a big difference. So, so this is this is this is a whole catch. Is if you think about this, you know, you're putting these drops. You're, if you're going to try and purify water or clean something and actually disinfect it, okay, ten month old versus one month old fresh bleach. This is the kind of difference in effectiveness you have. Now, what does that tell you? Uh, you could take it two ways. One, if you're trying to disinfect water to drink, right? then because you have a lower concentration, a significantly lower concentration of, of sodium hypochlorite in your older bleach to do the same amount of volume effectively. And again, when you're, when you're making drinking water, you want to put just enough to kill the baddies. You don't want any extra in it, okay? Because you've got to then let that dissipate, sun destroy it, something to get it back out because you don't want to kill the goodies inside your body. So you look at it from that perspective, 
if you've got a gallon of bleach that's close to a year old, I mean, look at this now. This is just sitting here. Uh, again, we're about close to two minutes into the video. One drop of blue dye in straight bleach and diluted to the same level straight bleach. And look at the difference here, okay? So if you were going to be drinking, if you this was water and you were putting a couple drops in it and it was 10 months old bleach, I might just put an extra drop in a quart. And then leave it air out it's extra just for you know leave it out in the sun for a, a few hours or hell a day uh just to as much as i could you know hanging on my backpack if i'm out hiking and let the sun beat down on it as i'm getting around for the day just to make sure i'm not going to do damage to my my own personal uh personal ecosystems and all that but uh by the same token if you're using it because you want to disinfect an area Will these two work uh, the same? Yes, but if you need to if you need to spray bleach on something and you want to leave it soaked for five minutes and you've got fresh bleach and that's what's going to do the job, guess what? If you've got ten month old bleach, yeah, still use it. It's still viable, but but think about it. Okay, instead of five minutes, you may want to leave it on there for a half a damn hour. Okay, to get the same effect, and it is going to run out if it's particularly nasty stuff. You know, when you put this dye in here, it's no different than killing germs. The sodium hypochlorite is doing its job, doing the work, and it's being used up in the process. So that's the other portion that we want to get down about, or what I want to be truthful about, is that at some point, this is going to quit working when this still has leftover work that it can do, okay? So there you go. There, there you have it. Uh, PSA for bleach and aging and how that impacts it. So please be safe, use the product wisely, and but keep in mind that when they're giving you directions on the back, you know, gosh, you're giving you, they're probably giving you a higher concentration to disinfect and what you really need early on, just so that when you get to 10 months out and this stuff's still viral, viable, uh, it's still gonna do the job. At least if I was a manufacturer, that's what I would do. Uh, by the same token, uh, I don't know, you know, I mean, they maybe their take on it's a little bit different. So just uh, be safe out there, use the products wisely. Uh, remember, if it's older, you may need to give it some more time or use a little bit extra depending on your application. But you have to decide that for yourself, uh, you know, you, and, and figure out what you think is going to work for you. And hopefully you make a good call on that. Yeah, yeah that's it. What the hell? We did we did red, we did blue. Let's do green. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just go four drops. I want to see just how many how much of this is going to actually uh, take to to kill off at least one of these to where they no longer are effective. So now I've just put four drops of green. We put two drops of red. One of blue so we've got four five six a total of seven drops of dye that we have food coloring that we put into each of these and I guess that's we'll call we'll call this a little bit of a follow-on and again I'm I'm playing around with this I'm learning as we go just watching uh, so we're up to seven drops of dye in equal amounts and the the one month old stuff is still going strong it looks like uh, Well, it looks like we may be running out of steam on our uh, 10 month old stuff. I think they are both still lightning, but again, I don't know I don't know how much how much it'll take to run out. so uh, we're at seven. let's go ahead. let's just go up to 10 drops. What the hell, right? Okay, so now we're up to 10 drops of dye total. Because I, I really want to see when this 10 month old stuff runs, just flat out runs out of steam. Boy, that one month old stuff's still gobbling it right the hell up, isn't it? 
10 month old, uh, come on, you can do it, you can do it, uh, maybe. Using bleach to purify water. Okay, now let's talk about sanitizing water and making it safe to drink using bleach. Now there's a lot of videos out there, some that are a lot shorter than my whole presentation here. But basically, what if you look it up on the web, look it up on the CDC website, or pretty much any place else, what you're going to find is directions that are going to tell you take two drops of bleach in one quart of water, agitate it, stir it up, leave it sit for half an hour, and that water should be safe to drink from biological contaminants. Now keep in mind, pesticides, heavy metals, any other nasty stuff that's in there, bleach isn't going to do anything with. It's just going to kill the critters, okay? So it's not a magic do-all, be-all, and it's, a, it's an emergency Thing that you would do, okay? Well, bro, the well broker, the electricity's out. You have no fresh drinking water, but you got a pond or a creek down the, down the road that you can get something to drink. Uh, you want to make sure you don't have bacteria, amoeba, other things that are going to make you sick because that's the last thing you need in an emergency is to have dysentery on top of dealing with everything else. Hence, bleach and water. Now, that being said, uh, what I want to talk about is first the methodology, and I'm just going to demonstrate real quick how I would do it with fresh bleach, okay, not old bleach, bleach but fresh bleach. I've got a 20 ounce bottle with one pint of clear water, so my formula for that would be two drops per quart, one drop per pint. If it were cloudy, it'd be four drops per quart or two drops for a pint of water. So, blink, one drop, that's all I need, okay. Close it up, agitate it, make sure it's well mixed. Now the next thing I'm going to do is because this container, I don't know if it's necessarily clean or not, I'm going to flip this thing upside down and unscrew the lid and let, so let, that, let that lid and the threads all flush out uh, to get make sure that the, if there's any bacteria growing under the cap or in the cap and in the threads, since this is a drinkable type of bottle especially, uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that that gets sanitized as well. So I'm gonna, and then I'm going to leave it sit for half an hour. What a bang! What a bang! Done. Now, here's where I'm going to throw some extra information that's going to require you to think for yourself a little bit and do due diligence. Okay, I'm not recommending overdosing the bleach per se in here, but what I'm going to tell you is that. By the other information in this video, especially when you look at the test of the straight 6% solutions, 10 month old versus 1 month old, and the difference in their potential and power and potency, what I will tell you is that if all I had was bleach, it was 10 months old or maybe even a year old, which by the way, one year is what Clorox says is a, is a maximum shelf life on this, but they don't really tell you how the date codes work or whatnot, so one year. If I've got bleach, it's 10 months, 11 months, a year old, maybe a little longer. I might go with two drops or even three in a pint of water, okay, because the, the bleach is a lot less potent. But if I do that, what I have to understand is that I may be putting too much bleach in here. And if I do that, what I need to do is I need to make sure that all of that bleach is gone before I drink it because bleach not only kills the bad bacteria or harmful things, growing living things in your water, if you drink it and there's still bleach in it, it's going to kill your natural flora, your natural bacteria in your digestive tract and could cause you to have problems of a whole different nature uh, trying to prevent one type of problem and getting another one. Okay, so you have to be very cautious about this. Remember that. Uh, you don't want to ingest bleach because it'll kill your good bacteria just as easily as it kills the bad bacteria and whatnot that's in the water. So here's what I would do. If I have questionable bleach and I feel the need to put a little bit extra in there to make sure that it kills the bad stuff, 
When I'm done, I'm going to take this bottle. First, I'm going to wait a lot longer than a half an hour. Maybe I'll wait an hour or so. Or wait a half an hour, then set it out in the sun for a couple of hours because sunlight, that ultraviolet, breaks down the sodium hypochlorite. Just like how sunlight eats the bleach in a pool, it's going to do the same stuff that I just put in this water, okay? So, if I do have to dose extra because or feel the need to because my, my bleach isn't fresh and it's older and may not be potent enough, I want to hedge my bets to kill stuff so I put extra in it, I'm going to hedge my bets to get rid of the bleach and set it outside in the sun for a couple of hours uh, in addition to that to make sure that I get rid of any residual chlorine before I go imbibing this stuff, okay? So there you have it. Uh, a little bit more detail and a little bit more breadth in a lot of uh, videos, I think, telling you how to how to sanitize uh, how to sanitize water with bleach. But I hope you find value in this. Uh, if you did, hey, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm not going to do any more videos on bleach, I don't think. However, uh, you never know what we might cover. But if we do, we'll try and be thorough about it and put things out in a direct and uh, non-biased manner. So thanks for watching, and until next time. Further testing. This was actually the initial round of tests I did with all three products. In the end, I opted to just add food coloring to the two regular bleach products to show how bleach degrades over time. The items we'll be testing this on are black notebook paper, pink cardstock, black t-shirt material, and regular printing paper with food coloring added and allowed to dry on its surface. This video clip has been sped up to 4x playback speed. The elapsed time is approximately 5 minutes and after about 3 minutes and 30 seconds most of the reactions were complete and that was for the 10 month old bleach which took the longest. I hope you enjoyed this video on bleach, things you need to know that most people don't. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, and while it's free to download for personal or educational uses, please link and give credit. Commercial use is expressly forbidden without my written consent. Thanks for watching.